It's all fair on this episode of Bothering the Band with Jeff Gorman and Jake Cochran of Illiterate Light. Seriously, these guys fucking rock. We play a cool Adam Sandler game and had a blast. Follow us on the socials and tell your grandmother. Hey, man. Hey there. Jake, right? Yeah, sorry. I'm, too many things popped up all at once. No, okay. no, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, thanks, up, for, thanks for doing this. Oh, absolutely. Are we waiting on Jeff? I don't know. Yeah, he sh- he'll be jumping on. We're, okay. we're in different uh, states at this point. Okay, cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. Uh, and, but uh, my name is Ryan. This is Abby. Welcome to Bothering the Band. Um, we're huge fans. This has been like a, a, over the last like year trying to get you on, get you guys on. So thank you. We're excited, man. Yeah. It's a little different. So, <laughs> well, cool. Yeah. Um, and where, where are y'all located? Uh, I'm in South Florida and Abby's in Wyoming. Oh, cool. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Jeff. Hey everybody. Sorry. I'm running a few minutes late here. No, no worries. worries. No worries at all, man. Uh, we were just shooting the shit a little bit. Um, my name is Ryan. This is Abby. She produces and puts this thing together. Thank you for the the change of plans. We we're supposed to do this uh, Thursday, and then I was flying, and it couldn't have gone worse. So <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, to hear no, we're all good. I'm glad we were able to make it work. Yeah. Where yeah. were you headed? I was heading to Wyoming to to do some work with Abby here. She's in Wyoming. Okay. I'm in, I'm in back in Florida, um, and yeah, we we were just chatting about uh, travel and tours, and we I was like, wait a minute, we gotta wait until <laughs> we're good to go with the podcast. So, um, first of all, thank you so much. We to say we're fans is is putting it mildly. So thank you for doing this. Uh, oh yeah, we, we we're happy to doing. do it. Uh, I don't know if you or or Danny told you that uh we got some funny funny questions for you so be prepared <laughs> I, to not take yourself seriously totally what to expect um <laughs> i've listened to um snippets of a couple of a couple episodes so i have a sense of the the kind of flow but i didn't really yeah. want to you know i figured we'd do best just kind of getting shots fired i think that's that's best too um we had a mutual friend tyler williams on this mm-hmm. so uh and you guys are hitting the road with them or just doing a couple shows? We got one coming up. Um, okay. With them. And then in 2019, I believe, we, we had done a full uh, couple week tour with them. So, yeah. They're cool. Yeah. They're great. We're doing, we're playing in North Carolina together this summer. Um, but yeah, like Jake said, in 2019, we started in uh, in the Southeast and made it all the way up to Toronto with those guys so we did we did two weeks of like theaters and played our first arena show with those guys in boston at aganis um bu hockey arena and um they're they're awesome yeah they're all like uh we we initially met tyler in richmond virginia um in 2017 and uh he's a fellow virginian as well so yeah that's right that was the connection there so where are you both at right now? Uh, so I'm, world? yep, Jeff here. I'm in, um, I'm in Harrisonburg, Virginia, a small town in the Shenandoah Valley, about uh, two hours outside of DC, two hours from Richmond. Um, it's a small college town in the mountains here. Um, so where Jake and I met and became pals back when we were in college. And um, it's, it's a great just kind of arts alternative place to live it's kind of smaller than these cities but it's similar to like an Asheville North Carolina or um, even like an Athens Georgia sort of thing so it's a little off the beaten path for the music industry but it's pretty suited for my lifestyle and things that I'm into oh, very cool All right, and, uh, next. yeah and <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm out in Nashville or just outside of Nashville in a town called Old Hickory Tennessee um, oh, yeah. And um, yeah, I moved out here about two and a half years ago, just in time for a tornado to hit and then a pandemic. And so I'm, I'm finally just starting to get out and, and 
kind of reconnect with the, the city here and get settled and starting to feel like home. Oh, cool. The only thing I know about Old Hickory is that's where uh, Nate Bargatze is from. <laughs> Man, yeah. That, it's funny. His name's come up so many times in the last like week. And I like, I've, he's one of my brother's favorites. And I somehow have still not listened to his stand up. So yeah. probably that's going to have to be a maybe tonight or tomorrow night sort of thing. But yeah, he's, he's apparently just like a couple blocks over from me. So he's, he's having his moment right now. So uh, jump on that. Oh, wow jump on that bandwagon before he you know, blows up in a sitcom or something. And then it's lame, <laughs> you know? There you go. Uh, um, so I, I'm curious about the roles uh, each of you play in the band. Do you, one, what are the roles? And two, do you have any nicknames for said roles? Um, I'm president, <laughs> CEO, band leader. Um, and uh, we haven't nailed down Jake's, Jake's part yet, but we at least have that dialed in. I'm... Uh, I'm savior godhead and, um, <laughs> and creative engineer. The other day we, um, so we we do a lot of stuff with our good friend, um, Matt Marinello, who's our lighting designer, our LD on the road. And he and Jake have been friends for years. And, um, he started coming out on tour with us in 2016 or 2017 and we weren't making any money and he was just looking to kind of do something creative and alternative. And so he started coming to our shows and he had had a summer gig working at six flags, drawing <laughs> caricatures of people. And so he got really good at like within like three minutes, like drawing these caricatures of people. And so we were kind of luring people over to our merch stand with Matt drawing free caricatures of them. And, you know, it saying, you know, like illiterate light shit, like it said the band name and stuff like that. And it was like, it was really fun. And people really loved it. It was also just kind of like goofy to be like, you know, 30 and drunk at a bar and then like get a caricature and like buy a t-shirt. Um, anyways, Matt's just been a really good friend and creative partner of ours for years. And um, every now and then me and Jake, just cause it's the two of us, if, if we butt heads on something or if we're not moving forward with something, it's kind of like a gridlock sort of thing. It's just the, what happens with the, a, you know, a dualism or a polarity. If they're in harmony, it's really amazing. And if they're not, sometimes it's hard to like break through that. But then what we've noticed is sometimes when we have a third person present, somebody that we feel really comfortable with, there tends to be a really nice motion. And so mm -hmm. we were talking about this new project that we're working on. It's just, a, it's, it's within a literate light. It's just a social media thing. But we we're like, how can we, you know, what's the special key here and we we're like we got to get marinello involved like we got to have matt like he's the third i was like it completes the holy trinity and it was like i'm obviously god you're jesus and matt's the holy spirit like that's very clearly defined you know <laughs> so <laughs> so we've been really working on these roles it's funny that you start there um you know just to just to kind of frame it out in a religious setting um but i, I mean i don't know like i i play guitar and sing and I play bass with my feet mm -hmm. um, and and in the studio we we do jump around a little bit I mean Jake's playing keys on a bunch of songs on our new record um, and and you know we're, we are kind of we are kind of jumping around behind the scenes a little bit more on stage we've even though we're both multi-instrumentalists we've decided to kind of stick to our particular lane and so on stage I'm I'm playing guitar and singing and bass. And then Jake is standing, playing drums and singing harmonies as well. And then really amplifying the whole show and the whole crowd with a lot of his stage presence and energy. Uh, so I don't know that we've got um, totally nailed down titles, but I do know that there's a, you know, there are some roles here. We need to get you business cards. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Jake. Yeah. Mama Jesus. <laughs> Jake, do you agree with all of that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like most bands that um, equate themselves to Jesus or some sort of savior or God, they're usually pretty good. So I'm, I'm okay to live in that world, you know? Like Beatles but, and Kanye. And Kanye. And, I was going to say, yeah. no controversy at all <laughs> with that. <laughs> As long as you fully understand that I'm saying I am Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, it's, not, it's not in the band. It's just an overall um, like personality sort of thing. I think as long as that's clear to everybody, 
Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll sit with that for a while. <laughs> well, adding that to my notes. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> I was definitely coming at it from the Trinitarian perspective. You know, I'm not actually God. I'm just saying within that framework, I would be the father, you know? Yeah, <laughs> you were going metaphorical. I was going on the meta meta. <laughs> I'm going oh, strictly man. physical. <laughs> I, I am the person Jesus. I just happen to live in Old Hickory. That's where Jesus is from these days. According to the Mormons, he's from the States. So there you hey, go. There you go. go. <laughs> okay. Um, zero segue here. Um, is Virginia for lovers? I certainly think so. It's where both Jake and I met our beautiful wives. Um, oh, or for so Glovers, I, like Donald Glover and Danny Glover. Kristen it is Glover. for Glovers too. Yeah, I don't know that we're ready to you know totally change the slogan but i think um childish gambino has has some serious fans here you know maybe maybe there is a yeah i think it's for glovers too it's for lovers glovers i don't know what others others are out there but yeah. something yeah we bring we welcome it all <laughs> okay um we'll start with jake what's the last book you read Last book, physical book that I read with pages, because I also do a lot of audio books, um, is called The Three Body Problem by a, it's a, a Chinese author. Uh, I believe it's, I, I pronounce it Chicken Lu, but that's clearly not how you say it. it's got an x in it in there somewhere. But it's a, it's a really cool science fiction book. It's the first of a series. And my older brother, Matt, recommended it to me. And it was it's pretty mind-blowing. Um, I'm a big science fiction guy. Okay, cool. Uh, Jeff, what about you? I It's fine. Both me and Jake are, are big on the audiobook train yeah. um, these days. I think probably that kind of started with heavy touring and just being in the driver's seat and everybody else kind of doing their own thing and just... So I've been listening to, in fact, this morning, I just started um, Grohl's uh, autobiography, Dave Grohl's oh, cool. um, Storyteller, um, which I'm listening to on audiobook, and I really am enjoying that so far. But the last physical book I read is a book by a psychologist named Robert Johnson. And I always just remember that because it's Robert yeah. Johnson, you know, Um <laughs> but it's called owning your own shadow. And it's a one of three books he wrote on like Jungian psychology, wow. dealing with understanding your shadow self, your dark side, um, and how to healthily kind of integrate that into your, into your life. And so it's also a very short book, which I, it's been helpful for me in the pandemic. It's like, it's like 60 or 70 pages and, you know, you can kind of cruise through it, but yeah, it's just called owning your own shadow and, I loved it. I mean, it's really, really, really killer. I felt like it was like dealing with a really big theme topic, but broken down for a moron like me in a, in a really simple, simplistic way. Um, so yeah, it was great. Cool. All I need is more book recommendations. Jeez. I have stacks <laughs> and it's just my, my, uh, new year's resolution this year was don't buy new books until I read the ones I have. And I've, I've that's failed. so hard. So I, hard. I don't know why that's hard. You know, you'd think like, you'd think that you wouldn't like do that, but you do. I mean, yeah. I I've done it a ton. Yeah. And, uh, uh, any new year's resolutions or any goals this year? personal or professional i started 2022 i just said for the month of january um that i was going to wake up before dawn uh every morning and i'd kind of feel out the rest of the year from there mm -hmm. and um i did that for january and i i can't really remember it came because there was a little bit in a malcolm Gladwell book, um, Blink or no, not Blink, Outliers, where he talked about a lot of a lot of you know people that have accomplished great things throughout their lives. You know that being a characteristic of them. Mm. And I always like waking up early, but I just kind of was like, oh, that's a cool little practical thing. I'll just you know I'll, yeah. I'll just 
give that a go for January. So I did that. Um, and, um, got a couple other little things floating around, but no, I've, I'm not, I'm not huge on, I usually just, you know, for like a month or two, try to get yeah something going. And then after that, I just kind of see where the year goes. <laughs> Jake, anything working on? Yeah. Like, uh, I think the thing that comes to mind mainly for me is, um, for a while, the, uh, I've wanted to play with, um, see what would like to be an actor getting some acting roles uh just i really love stage performance and um have never really done never really did theater um and then just like some of the music videos and stuff that jeff and i have you know written and created and then filmed with with the crew that we have in virginia um they've always been really excited i've, I've always been really excited about them and afterwards i've always been like oh, i should i should i want to do more of this i want to experiment with it and so i've pushed myself a little bit and uh, taking some online acting classes and um, and uh, just put together a team with some friends here in Nashville and shot a little uh, short film for a festival where the whole film had to be uh, written, filmed and edited in 54 hours and completed. Wow. Like we got a genre at the beginning of it and some things we had to include. And so it's, it's it fits into a category of what I've, I've now under, I understand is um, I think it's called like a cinema race or something like that. It's like that you're racing against the clock, uh, but we did that. And, and I kind of put that team together so that I could see what it was like to act and deliver dialogue. And that was a pretty fun and enjoyable experience for me. And, uh, and yeah, I think Jeff and I are going to be working on some goofy YouTube videos and just, just, you know, trying to, the other end of that is uh, like every band out there, we're trying to, or every band out there that didn't really grow up on social media, we're kind of trying to find our place there. And, yeah. um, and I think trying to do it in a way that we don't feel bitter uh, about having to do it. Like that's an easy, it's an easy out is to just like, I didn't get into it for this. And, and uh, I don't want like the self-promotion thing's always a little weird. And, and um, yeah, I think it's like, we're trying to reclaim that space a little bit and just what feels fun to us. So got some of that stuff coming up and boiling up right now. Oh, that's cool. And and I agree with you. I, I think uh, I'm a victim of my own bitterness when it comes to like, we had a, we have a lot of younger artists on and we have fun with them. Of course, we try not to be ageist, but some of them are like, you got to get on TikTok, And, and our first reaction is like, Ugh, you know, mm-hmm. but uh I think we're embracing it not yeah. as happily as you guys are. But so way to go. Um, oh, it's a choice to be happy. Yes, indeed. I appreciate it. And <laughs> um, two cool, uh, two, two cool like goals too, you know, way to go guys. Way to put the pedal to the metal. Um, when's the last time you accidentally littered <laughs> or on purpose, but I don't think that's happening. That is funny. Um, <laughs> or like, I a napkin out the window I know I'm trying to think like I I feel like I so yeah the other day it was really windy here in Harrisonburg and like like a little like a napkin flew out of my it was trash day and a Mm -hmm. napkin flew out of our our trash can um that was like going to get picked up and it was like getting blown by the wind. Right. And like, I like, I like went after there was like, there's like a, like a, it's like still on our property, you know, there's like 10, 15, 20 yards, kind of like down to like gun it and like grab it. And then like another one shot out and it was just like, it was like, I had to like calculate it in my head. I was like, ah, that's like 30 yards. It's going pretty fast. I'm going to be like sprinting down <laughs> the street for a napkin. And, and I let it go. And uh, you know, I, I I'm sad. I have to confess that right now, but it was just like, I shut that, you know, I, I made sure no, nothing else after that, but Hey, at least it was a napkin and not like a, a, a six pack ring in the ocean or something. Like exactly. So yeah. It yep. happens to the best of us. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I almost got road rage the other day because, and the, the thing is like, I totally remember what it was like in high school. Like we would go to McDonald's and like, as like 16 year olds, like just, I don't know, just growing up in like that world where that it just nothing really mattered. Like I remember like 
friends of mine, we, whatever, we'd be like driving around like out in the country or on the highway and like finish off a cheeseburger bag and just chuck it out your window. Like I remember being a yeah. kid just like not. And I saw that happen on the highway the other day. And I was so pissed off. Like I haven't had road rage in like a long, and I like, and I wasn't, I like, I'm like taking a picture of the like license plate. Like, I'm like, who am I going to call the cops? You know, like, and so I like to file a report. I know exactly. But I was so angry. I was just like, Oh man. Like, but at the same time, you know, like I was like, well, I also know I've also been there and I know what it feels like to just not care about that. But at this yeah. point in my life, I was really, I was flustered. Oof. Yeah. Maybe we need a hotline. <laughs> <laughs> littering littering hotline littering and hotline littering Actually, I, think that's, I think that's called twitter i think that's what you use twitter yes. for oh that's a good point litter Docs. litter <laughs> litter twitter we're on to something here i like it <laughs> jake when's the last time you accidentally i'll say the, the first thing that came to mind is um the state of my what i'll what i'll call my carport outside mm -hmm. on, on my house um is kind of just full of a bunch of things that don't fit anywhere else in my house that i haven't gotten rid of yet uh and there's been some wind storms here in nashville the last week or so and definitely noticed some some stuff disappearing and <laughs> flying around the neighborhood and so i think that's probably a a, a bit of the the litter of my life uh becoming the litter of the world that's probably my my best bet <laughs> I have to call this out. I haven't heard the word carport in so long. Well, come on out to Nashville, Tennessee. We all got them out here. <laughs> we we had them growing up. Uh, so Abby and I are both from Orlando, Florida. And um, I feel like if you had a garage, you were like rich. Yeah. <laughs> we had carports, Yeah, you know, and that. with a lot of stuff that would blow away. Sometimes it would be there and you're like, where's this? And it's gone because of a windstorm. Yeah, um, I, grew, I grew up with the uh, the garage, so everything just went in the garage, and you got yeah. to keep your your litter contained in that way. But at this point, the house doesn't have great storage, so it's like we we we've got some like big stuff we're selling on Craigslist, and it's just sitting out there, and the paperwork was sitting on top of it, and it's it's now somewhere else. <laughs> we still got the big the stuff. World. Anybody wants to buy an old uh, you know an old dishwasher, you you come give me a call, an old hickory. I was going to say, if you want to promote your, your Craigslist <laughs> offerings here, you know, <laughs> this is, you can do it. I've been um, killing it on Facebook marketplace, this pandemic. Just yeah, I've, on been, there. I've been I, failing miserably trying to sell tools and like, yeah. uh, you know, just random books and shit. Cause people give me, you know, uh, a lot of books and artsy fartsy stuff, but like, oh, Ryan will deal with it. He's a writer. And, yep. um, I got some cool, like old school coffee table books and stuff like that. Can't, can't give them away. I mean, you know, it's probably hard to get rid of like vintage, like talking head stuff in the middle of Montana, you know, like I'm sure people <laughs> out there just kind of, you know, doing their own thing. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so have you ever been to a bar mitzvah? I have not. I would love to go. And it's another, you know, it's another PSA, like the things we're selling on Craigslist. Like I, you know, I would really appreciate that experience. So anybody out there that's listening that wants to send an invite. I will when, when my daughter has her bat mitzvah, well, I'll invite you guys. If you, yes. Wow. yes. <laughs> that's bold. Yeah. And we'll what will that be? Um, like she's seven. So five years. Oh, all right. There you go. Yeah. Throw it um, on the Google Calendar. That's great. Like, hey, I got to invite this band that you have. <laughs> <laughs> What's some real traction by that? We can play a few tunes. I would love it. Actually, that would be fantastic. Uh, Jake, ever been to a bar bat mitzvah? I, I was, I'm trying to think. I, I, I've definitely been to some Jewish weddings, but I don't okay. think I've ever been to the, the, the mitzvahs. Yeah, uh, you're not missing much. It's just a... a prepubescent child reading hebrew like sing reading hebrew it's, it's yeah. that sounds it's, awesome it's a little awkward you know <laughs> um who's your favorite ninja turtle and why <laughs> dang uh, yeah i know yeah like shredder is jesus shredder. loves shredder 
Shredder's kind of like a legend with within like me and my brothers, like our our fam. Um, but um, who which was the one that ordered the uh, in the movie, of course, um, that orders the pizza with no anchovies? And I mean, if there's anchovies on that thing, I'm gonna be ticked off. That guy, we quote him a lot too. I think that that might have been Michelangelo. I was gonna say, um, I think pizza is exclusive to Michelangelo. Yeah, yeah. So that's gonna be me. Okay. I think Jake's wearing red, so he's got to be Raphael. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, that sounds that sounds doable. Or Shredder. You guys are both Shredder. Um, how is your handwriting? Despicable. Just uh, mine is it. Uh, pretty illegible, especially if I'm trying to write lowercase. I think in my adulthood, I've I've switched to all uppercase. It's terrible. Um, yeah, yours, yours is not not doing too hot either. I I like I have a the inability to make my letters the same size or or write them the same way. Like it seems like if if you write the letter D a thousand times or however many times you'd write it on a you know writing a paper you know what do, what do you write anymore writing a journal entry about how sad i am um i i like make the letters differently depending on what letters come before and after and i know i didn't know that was a thing until somebody watched me write once and they were like you're you're doing it so wrong <laughs> yeah when you're not doing a service to yourself but your tears are also hitting the page and then you're writing on top of that <laughs> So the writing's bad and then the paper's wet and it's a really mm -hmm. bad combo. Mm -hmm. But they're all different uh, sizes and it's hard to stay in the lines. I'm definitely actually, better at other stuff. I actually can read your handwriting. Um, I, don't think, I don't think your handwriting is illegible. It's just kind of like funny. Mm -hmm. But I, I can always read like when you, like I know what you're saying about like the different letter sizes. Um, but I always, I found your writing to be legible. I think I've kind of entered the point in my life where it's like, basically I'm, I'm kind of the only person that can read my writing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's like, uh, but I write, I write pretty much every morning. Um, so I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm fine with that, but yeah, it's, okay. it's not, it's other people can't read it, but I do write a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you take, well, I don't know how old you guys are and I never did it either, but maybe different different studies for different parts of the country did you take penmanship or did were you taught penmanship i was taught um not cursive but, right but. right no i i mean i was taught a note-taking style cornell method mm -hmm. um but i wasn't taught like i mean I, I don't know i guess maybe in elementary school i don't really remember i remember very vividly learning how to use a keyboard Mm -hmm. um on a computer and I, I remember that like it didn't really register with me until but like I can type pretty fast I don't really think about it you know but like every now and then we'll like work with somebody and they're like engineering a pro tools session and they're like flying around and, like, all these key commands and then they'll like write out the track title and it'll be like d r u m s <laughs> and I'm like can't, and it's just like funny like some not everybody learned how to had a type. So I remember that, but I don't remember penmanship. Yeah, I, I had none of that training. Uh, I um, uh, I do remember specifically not even taking cursive. I think the school that I was in, uh, my year was the first year in third grade. Everybody used to go to cursive class, and then instead we went to typing class. So I, I literally, when my grandma writes me, um, I I don't even know how to read it i get my wife laney to read it to me <laughs> so i can like there's just some letters that i just still don't know what they look like and i'm i'm like I, that's not a b it looks like it looks nothing like a b um uh, so my, I read my grandma's cursive but she always writes the same thing just she just writes <laughs> love love hugs and kisses xoxo betty wait let's explore this you guys are writing letters to your adorable letters to your grandmothers <laughs> no i'm i'm receiving i'm receiving adorable letters from a my grandma i know mm -hmm. i know yeah I, I i gotta get her i gotta get her back i give her a phone call uh when, when we're on tour um i always like my grandfather used to write letters um he would he would just like type them and print them and then just like you know like print that out and like send that 
And I yeah. always thought that was like kind of like a funny workaround. Um, maybe I'll do that. I would do that with my handwriting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Is your handwriting pretty bad? Mine's bad. Mine's real bad. Yes. It's real serial killer. However, I was going to say, um, I also in college, I remember I had to write something on the dry erase board and I heard people snickering and I was like, what is going on? And I, that's when I learned, I, I, I formed the letters backwards. Like, mm. like for, like for an E, you know, most people go like that way. Mm-hmm. I'm going the other way. Yeah. Yeah. So had no I clue do that every now and then, like, it would just be like randomly. I'll just be like writing something out and just like two letters will just be backwards. I don't really know what's going on with that, but yeah. what you just did reminded me so much of Billy Madison when he has to spell. <laughs> Ruru- Ruru- <laughs> yeah. In front of the, in front of the class. um which also reminded me the the podcast i was listening to of y'all's um earlier was the one with uh rich um wilkes Wilkes, yeah yeah who uh directed i mean we're my family's like we're huge sandler fans and so i loved airheads growing up oh great um, among among other many many other adam sandler movies but it was like i remember going to um i grew up in baltimore and they opened a espn zone like mm-hmm. there back in the day i don't even know if they still exist but it was like a big deal is like probably 1999 or something like that and um when they would open these espn zones they'd have like actors and and musicians and athletes and stuff come and just like be there for the debut and so we went i was like nine years old and we went and i remember having binoculars from like a mile away watching Adam Sandler get out of a limousine and walk like 10 feet into an ESPN zone. Like, that's like how stoked we were. We we're like, Oh my gosh, there he is. Like it's happy Gilmore. This is so cool. So I don't know if, if people still do that now that the internet exists. Um, but that was at least how big of fans we were growing up. Oh, uh, we would do that. I remember going to like uh, uh, Planet Hollywood opening, and you're like, "There's Sylvester Stallone. He's so yeah. short." You know? Yeah, I know it's nuts. Oh man, um, thanks for listening to that Rich Wilkes episode. That's that was yeah. fun. He was he's a he's a character, but we grew up too, like watching these films, and now we're just like buddies with him. It's very very weird. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, if you had to play a gig in a fast food chain restaurant, which one would you choose? Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> if I don't know that if people so consider quick. that a restaurant, it's 24 seven, a lot of places. So I'd go Dunkin' and I'd probably try to do it somewhere in New England and, you know, really, <laughs> really ham it up with that crowd up there. Hmm. Fast food, I mean, Taco Bell came to mind. I don't know why. I think I heard at one time some some band uh, told me that the first time they played South by Southwest, th- that a Taco Bell in Austin, Texas, is was their gig. Like, and that has stuck with me. I was like, wait, it's a what? What? Like a Taco Bell booked bands? And uh, I think that <laughs> that's always been a secret dream of mine. I want to know the logistics. Is it like roof? Are you playing in the dining room? Like, uh, is it out in the drive-through? And what Dude, band? Think... It's funny you ask that, Jake. It reminds me of Patrick Clifford because when we first started going to Nashville, there is a guy who's a friend of ours now, and um, he was doing A and R for um, Concord, and we were like kind of feeling out the possibility of working together, but also just being buds and shooting the shit. And he would come out and he'd. So he'd be like, oh, yeah, I want to sign you guys. You know, and we'd be like, all right, well, what's the plan? You know, he'd be like, I'm going to put you in every Dairy Queen across the country. You're going to go do a Dairy Queen tour. No band's ever done it. We'll have you in a different Dairy Queen, different city every night. Like that was the whole joke. And like now every time we see him out in Nashville, we always riff on that. So it's funny <laughs> you mentioned that. There's a Dairy Queen in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, where Abby <laughs> is. All right. Oh my God. Yeah. They got real yeah. blizzards out there. <laughs> oh that's funny so back to your grandma who's your grandma's favorite singer (laughs) that's a great question um certainly not me because she can't hear the the, because the lyrics aren't loud enough um Mm -hmm. that's why i'm not her favorite singer um but 
it's funny my uh my grandmother on my mom's side she is i don't know man my my grandfather was such a jazz jazz nut i mean we we like i every time i'm at her house we're, we were listening to instrumental music i have okay, no cool. clue for either side that's a little homework i'm gonna have to do. i'll have to write her a letter yeah. Dear Grandma, who's your favorite singer? I'll turn my lyrics up on the next record. <laughs> I, I think for me, um, my I'm thinking of my grandmother on my father's side. We call her Mimi, and um, I think the 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 easiest and most truthful answer is that um, her late husband, who I called Granddaddy. Uh, his singing voice was probably her favorite. He had, he was a Baptist minister for many years and would sing hymns very loudly with this very intense vibrato to the point when, when I was little, I was like, I would hear him sing and had never heard anything like it. And it was, it was a big joke in our family to, like that sort of thing. And he, it was beautiful, but it was just like, man that's insane that that's what your voice does when you sing. so I, i'd say that that granddaddy i would say that's a voice like a choir of angels <laughs> exactly <There we> <laughs> um did you ever have braces as a kid twice oh. and i probably i'm not gonna lie i went to the dentist early on in the pandemic and i was like hey my bottom like teeth are all jacked up you know what's the move here and uh and they were like you should get braces again and i was just like <laughs> gold teeth damn it i was like listen i i really think my band's about to catch a break like i'm sorry i can't do this right now like i got it you know <laughs> like yeah i was like can you just like sedate me for like a week and i'll just wake up and they'll just be like you know are, are we there yet technologically but no so twice when i was in middle school oh devils jake no no i had some retainers which is weird because i never had braces yeah but um when I no, my teeth were all like really spread out when I was young and I had like a big gap in between my front teeth and um, the, the dentist or the um, yeah, whoever I went to was kind of just like, yeah, we could, but uh, your head's going to get bigger and it, that's all going to grow together. <laughs> and so it, it did. It look, they look all right. Up there. I that, that's happy. great. Yeah. Uh <laughs> But I had some big old teeth as a little kid. It was funny. Nice. Oh, your head will catch up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. If you, <laughs> I'm going to switch up this question a little bit. If the, if a train sound were to be sampled in a Wilco song featuring Kanye West, <laughs> what would that song be called? <laughs> Welcome to Bothering the Band. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Damn. Um, oh man. I'm, I feel like the ball's in your court on this one, Jake, after watching the doc, man. I did just watch the doc. I just you- watched his, his Ellen performance and I live and we both, both Jake and I live right next to train tracks. So I know I'm we there. heard it before you came on, we heard his and uh, I was like, yep. this would be so- good for a song. A train song, sorry, a train sound sampled in a Wilco featuring Kanye song. <laughs> okay, because <laughs> they're they're gonna put out a record. Oh, okay. they have um, to after this. Man, I wish I had something creative. I'm balls in Jake's court. He's better with this. Uh, How about Yeezus, etc. Et drops drops of blue sky heart attack. <laughs> That's a drops of Jupiter train song. That I went, I went a little outside oh, of the. See, uh, that's good. Drops, uh. but so it's such a good idea. I, I already immediately forgot what I said, so I'm glad it was recorded. <laughs> <I know>. because, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my ideas um, come often and they don't stick around long. That's how my brain works. Oh man, uh, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> I do how like Jesus, etc. That's Jesus, etc. It was pretty fun. Yeah. Um, what do you? <laughs> How do you feel about Dave Matthews band? <laughs> I'm Was proud of them. There? Yeah. I've never uh, listened beyond the, the, the times that somebody else played them around me. And I, I tend to not, uh, I don't feel about the music the way that I feel about music that I love. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but seems seems like they've done some cool stuff in their lives, and they take good care of their their people. And I think that's a very that's kind cool. and diplomatic way to say you're like I'm not that into them, you know. Like <laughs> that was very cool. All the record, I've heard their great said, lives. You said Dave Matthews Band, right? Yeah. Or uh, for some reason, I thought you said day of matthews band and i was just still thinking about like the last question which was like, a little quirky and i was like I-, I hope i'm not like missing something like i'm like supposed to be riffing off of this but okay yeah dave matthews what band. if uh, what if the, i just uh, right now learned that that's not their name yeah <laughs> day, day of matthews <laughs> i know that that doesn't have the same exact <laughs> ring to it but it's cool going we play in charlottesville virginia mm-hmm. really often and um I don't know if he still has a place there, um, but you know, it's just that was kind of like really his his town growing yeah. up, and it's, it is it's really everybody there just loves loves Dave, um, and uh, yeah, I've I saw him in two thousand and nine at Hershey Park when uh, the Black Crows were opening, which was kind of a funny pairing, but they're both like big big, you know fans with real diehard um fan bases um and uh it was cool i mean they were it's funny though i'm I'm like in a similar boat to jake like i didn't really grow up on his records but like they it's i just love seeing a band give it everything they've got on stage and like even like for those guys like 20 years into it they were just like not holding back it looked like they were trying to get a record deal you know they were like going for it i was like this is this is tight so you know it, it's it's always cool to just see, see somebody go really hard like that yeah um buddies with adam sandler too bringing it all back around mm. that's right he had a cameo in which a film few was he was in oh, zohan yeah yeah, yeah. it's like a redneck in zohan and then um he but i'm thinking he was like a dress he was like a stylist in one or like a he was like helping adam sandler try clothes on he was um, also in Just Go With It with he was Nicole Kidman's like husband who's in the Fonz or something. I thought Just Go With It was um was uh Rachel from Friends. Uh Jennifer. Yeah, Anderson. yeah, she's in that too. Yeah. Nicole Kidman's in that as well. Nicole Kidman and Dave Matthews play um like a I don't know. I don't want oh, to describe that's right. That's, right. that's right. That's right. Yeah. Oh man. I'm going to have to get a rewatch. Okay. Let me tell you the whole plot of just go. With it. So Adam Sandler in the beginning is about oh. to get married. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> we have to get Jake's wife involved in this. That's like, I feel like that's kind of right up her alley. She loves, <laughs> she loves Adam Sandler, maybe more than Jeff, but we did have Adam a- Sandler. We had Adam Sandler trivia at Jake's the other night. Oh, which, that sounds fun. I would love it, to jump on that. It was St. Patrick's Day, and uh, we had some friends over in this band, Twin, and uh, we're, we all love Irish. Or we all love Guinness and Irish, whatever. And we were just reading, like, you know, Irish poetry and, like, snippets of James Joyce, and then wow. quickly transitioned to Adam Sandler trivia. As one does. Awesome. I mean, exactly. they're so connected. For St. Pat's yeah. Day. And we went through and – and asked is you choose a movie and you'd have to name the love interest so i'll do it with you right now we'll see how you do adam sandler early 90s drew barrymore as the young lady wedding singer so 50 first dates or 50 first dates you hit either of those and $50 million will be in your Venmo right away. Do you, do you have to name the character name? The character name. Well, in, in Wedding Singer, it's Julia, because she goes, Julia, Julia. 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 But can yeah. you remember her real last name? Because that's what it's going to be when she marries the punk. Yeah, the, the antagonist. Mr. Julia. Mr. Julia. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That was where we all got stumped. Yeah, yeah, that's a toughie, and I don't know. I don't know her character. That that's a good fun trivia with like uh, film pop culture geeks, which I have okay. a lot of friends. How about uh, how about uh, Billy Madison? Veronica Vaughn. Of course. Okay, now I'm gonna run you down a little rabbit hole. I all hear. Right. It. We got to give one to give that to Abby. Okay, Abby, you next? Nah, I'm good. <laughs> okay all right julia sullivan time. by the way wedding singer 
So oh, excited, amazing. All right. All right. So, so Vicky, I, I, I'm sorry. Damn it. I'm giving it away. All Vicky right. Valancourt. I know. Vicky Valancourt, Veronica Vaughn, uh, Happy Gilmore. Oh, it's uh, Julie Bowen's character is the, is the actress. Yep. I'll give you a hint. First name is the state that I'm in right now. It's Virginia. Is it double V? Yes. Wow. I have never noticed double V. Wow. I've never noticed this pattern before. This is fascinating. Yeah. Wow. This podcast is taking a turn. (laughs) It is no longer about music. All the Sandler. I know. I know. Anyways. I, I don't know. That's Virginia great. Bennett. What's what was it? Virginia. I think it's Virginia Bennett, isn't it? Can you, know. Abby, Abby, are you on the web? Up. Wait, we were talking about which movie? That's uh, that's Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore lead. Virginia Keep Bennett. Virginia Bennett. Bennett. Wow. She's a reporter. Yep. Wow. Okay, anyways, we can move on. But yeah, no, that was so no, we, fascinating. Hey, this that is fun. Made my- <laughs> I can't wait to steal that. Give no credit to my other fellow movie geeks. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, what's harder, um, a bike tour or running a farm? <laughs> a bike tour. <laughs> that yeah. sounds insane. <laughs> yeah, especially tour, the way. We, yeah, go ahead. I think especially the way we did it back in the day, which was um, sort of like. I don't know, almost like anarchistic lack of leadership in a way where everybody was in charge. And uh, <laughs> the goal was to spend as little money as possible and 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 like trust that we were going to either make some money at shows or um, or we would eat out of dumpsters and just <laughs> we, we left a lot up for uh, up for grabs on the on the planning. And that I think if Jeff and I did a bike tour again uh it would be run very differently and it would be a lot easier and more enjoyable as far as the like the uh the sanity level but the yeah the the what what sorry what i'm talking about is that we we toured music by bicycle for for a few weeks out of the year for about five years in a row and uh and did it with just this awesome crazy fun group of people who um yeah it was joyful and ecstatic and also uh i'll say a very shaping point in my life where i learned a lot about myself (laughs) you know in defense in defense and i think most people probably after you know watching early portlandia kind of already know this but in defense of dumpster diving um because i don't i don't really dumpster dive you know a whole lot these days in my life, but a lot of just perfectly normal food gets thrown away in our uh, society and in our culture. And so it's worth noting that the dumpster diving uh, was always like getting like unopened, you know, boxes of cookies and stuff like, you know, like things that are like, (laughs) you just chuck this because it's like a day expired, but it's still totally fine. But even so I mentioned all that because the other night I went, I did something and I was getting into town Oh, I went and I picked something up in Charlottesville. And I was getting back into town. It was like it was like midnight, and I was on the phone with my friend, um, and we were like chatting about a few ideas. And I was just like fired up. And then I'm getting off the highway, and I like I see Krispy Kreme like right off the highway, and I was like, hell yeah, I'm getting a freaking donut right now. And um, and then I pulled up, and they were closed. And I just had thought I don't know why I thought like they're 24 seven now. Um, and I ha- and I'm like on the phone with them, and I'm like, I know, I know in that dumpster right now are the entirety, the entirety of the days. Like, I know there's a, if I just put my hand in there and I was like kind of having one of those moments, I was like, I'm a grown man. I'm 32 years old. I'm going to drive home and just go to bed. (laughs) What I did, but you know, it still crosses my mind. I'm so curious if there's any decent dumpster donuts. Oh, there are all of them. dude. (laughs) Yeah. Donuts are one of the prime, the it's the easy ones dumpster diveable foods especially in it's, the winter time 
It's all so, sugar. What's gonna go bad? I know. Yeah, I mean you're <laughs> you're right, and there it's probably a like a clear garbage bag of it's, just donuts. It's exactly you know? that. It's not like mixed in with like the Liquid cigarette or, butts yeah. and all that. Yeah. You know, it's just like just but, donuts. A similar. Uh, this was years and years ago, but um, I I went into to check a dumpster at a Krispy Kreme one time, and I like opened the door to where like the the dumpster area mm-hmm. behind the thing. And, and uh, as I like walk into that area, I am, am surprised to find another person already in the dumpster. And, and we both <laughs> screamed because we were not expecting it. And he was just like, some glaze for me, man. <laughs> he was like, there's plenty. And I just grabbed some and left. And uh, that was it. Man. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it's those it's those tales that I think that's a, the prime example of this, why we started this podcast is <laughs> like, you know, some of your fans are going to listen to this and be like, yes, they're so stoked on that. Um, and be prepared next time you're going to play a show somewhere and someone's gonna be like, here's some Krispy Kreme and not tell you whether they're fresh. I know. Or from the yeah, for real. I'll be like, yeah, it's, it's interesting. They're in a bag and not the box. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> why are they in a, <laughs> grocery, a, a grocery bag that is not from the state um who who has better calf muscles jeff or jake uh that's a good question it's funny because because i have i actually do like weight lifting side of stuff so on paper i should but i'll be honest i don't think i could hang for five minutes standing up behind a drum kit the way jake does so it's another. I've got that's... one really strong calf muscle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, I think on, on, on paper, I'd take the cake. But when it really came down to the battlefield, Jake would come out on top. Putting it in practice. That's know? right. Man. Um, okay. So uh, tell us two things. One, what's next for, for you guys uh, personally? And then the band. And also tell ever, tell the folks where they can find you and all that jazz cool in my world well for the band first off uh for the band we have a new record that we just finished and we just signed our new record deal for that and we haven't announced this yet but we've got a ton of tour dates for this year uh we've announced some stuff in in early summer but um we're doing a full country tour starting in august um we kick off in it in Atlanta and go all the way up the mid Atlantic and Northeast through the Midwest, West coast back through, you know, the Southwest. So we're really, we're doing it all. Um, Florida, South Florida. Uh, for whatever reason, we're not hitting Florida, <laughs> we're doing it all, but, but the places where y'all live, we're avoiding yeah. <laughs> yeah. no Wyoming and no Florida. No, no, we, no we did some Florida dates just, uh, just a couple months ago, I think. And yeah. So we've kind of like, uh, yeah. I think it'll, we, we have to like, you know, I wait, a, wait a few months before we get back there, I guess. That's a good point. I love touring. We both love touring Florida. Like I, I'm, I'm legit going to mention that to our agents and just say, Hey, why can't we throw? Cause yeah, we did Jacksonville back in November. Um, yeah. and we'd at a uh, Jack rabbits and we've had killer shows in Orlando as well. And, um, uh, Pensacola and, that's cool. Florida, right? Not Alabama. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. technically. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I yes. think socioeconomically it might, be. it might be. <laughs> it's another place. Yeah. Well, anyways, we'll try to get back to Florida, but yeah, we've got a ton of tour dates coming up. Um, our new record is coming out. We're nailing down the release date right now, but we'll at least have singles out by, you know, by the end of the year, which we're super excited about. Um, so that's kind of what's coming up for, for the band um as far as in our in our personal lives hmm, i'm trying to chew on that well the big thing (laughs) that i've got coming up for me which i should i'll i'll lead with is um i am making a six by eight um gravel foundation for my mom's shed that she's getting installed in about a month so it's uh it's about six hours of work and it's going to be a big, a big day for me in April. So that's, what's really on the horizon for me. Huge accomplishment. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'll send pictures. I'll, yeah. send, I'll document the whole thing. We'll TikTok it. It'll be great. Jake, what about you? What's any acting uh, gigs coming up? 
You know, I mean, not not um, not that I know of, but that's the thing. I, I'm I'm just about to put myself out there and see what comes back, and and so that's a, you know, that yeah. could be a thing. But more than anything, I'll probably just uh, make some goofy YouTube videos with some friends and and uh, enjoy that just as much. Um, and then I'm also uh, in in between tour and stuff like that. I, I I produce bands here in Nashville and record. I've got a little studio in my backyard and. Um, so I've got some cool projects coming up there and some stuff that I've worked on in the past year. That's all just coming out now that, so it's kind of like, uh, having a studio space here and uh, moving to Nashville and now having a studio space. Um, I, I like, I felt like I had to start producing, you know, it's like, yeah. uh, uh, it's like, man, if I, I can't, I got it so that Jeff and I would have a place to practice and I could work on my own stuff. And, and then I just realized there's, I've got a lot of downtime where, he's not here we're not working together and and i'm filling that with with some other opportunities so have you i'm sure they have it in nashville uh central casting have you signed up to for that you know as far as the acting thing goes i'm like such a newbie that that i'm learning about all of that right now i like i i don't i haven't yet put together a reel or a resume but that's on my to-do list for the week and uh i've got i'm going to my first in-person acting classes uh yeah starting next wednesday and so a lot of that's going to start falling into place I, I i like i've been taking steps every every week or month or so but uh i i definitely it's been something i've been holding a little close to home because um i have a cycle a personality cycle that that uh I get excited about something and I rush to do it and tell everybody about it. And then I never do it. And so <laughs> I've been, been quiet and slow with this one because I, I think it's something I'm actually yeah. wanting to integrate into my life a little bit differently. So, but oh, I, that's yeah, so, cool. so what is it that you're talking about? The central casting is um, you, you can just sign up uh, I believe for free and then there's different tiers, but uh, they start you off doing like extra work. Cool. So now in Nashville, there's a ton of production right. and uh, you could probably just, you know, make a couple bucks and, and have, have a credit to your name. Like right. I've done it in Florida and I've done it in New York, just, you know, for total, just fun. Like yeah. I was on a USA show oh, cool. um, a few years ago and right. just m- for, for me, I, I I just wanted to tell my buddies like, Hey, look, yeah. that's that guy. And that, that you can tell from my walk. Um, <laughs> that's really it. But uh, yeah, look, I, Nashville is huge. Now there's so much stuff coming out, especially not just music. So right. I'm sure once you start doing the acting class at all those, yeah. you know, people will be like, you gotta do this. You gotta do that. So totally. don't listen to me. And on that note, everyone follow illiterate light on Instagram. It's, it's uh, just illiterate light. With a blue check mark, envious. Mm-hmm. Follow we bothering the band people. too. <laughs> yeah, bothering. Yeah. And I love that you guys are wearing helmets in this one. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. Safety That's... first. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and uh, I can't. I mean, we can't wait for the the new record. Just uh, we'll be pumping it uh, and promoting it. So thank you guys for doing bothering the band. That's our show. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Won't be the last time.